Hey everyone, thank you guys for coming back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to talk about five or six tips. Six, I'm sorry, six tips for international nurses or commonly called overseas nurses. I want to thank you all for rocking me, all the subscribers that have been subscribing to my channel. I see you guys and all the persons that have been here since day one from I was at one subscriber. Thank you guys so much. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. This channel is called Empowered RN and I called it Empowered RN because I created it to empower nurses or professionals all across the world with information so that you can make better decisions in terms of migration and going to different countries. Now, now, over here, we're going to talk about opportunities. I'm a registered nurse, if you don't know, and I'm also a registered nurse, originally from Jamaica, now living in the United States. So I'll be talking about nursing, any other profession, and any other healthcare-related job opportunities that I see that can make your lives better. Your girl over here will be sharing that information. Now, today, I'm going to talk about some tips for my foreign nurses or my international educated nurses, and this can apply also to those that are other professionals in different areas, social work or teachers, anything, you name it. Now, these tips are very important because it's like a heads up. I'm giving you certain things that you need to make sure you guys have. Well, we normally have it, but if you don't, just to fine tune some more into these tips. Now we're going to get in the meat of the matter. So my number one tip that I'll see, and I have this discussion with Subi for those who watch that video also, is to come with an open mind. And I'm going to reiterate that come with an open mind open mind to say that the norms of values of practices or certain things that you do in your country when you migrate to another country it may not be the norm and just come with an open mind to realize that it's not the norm where you're from and just be accepting of other people's culture so when I say come with an open mind, I want you guys also to come with an open mind as wide as the Caribbean Sea. If you can't even stretch it out and go further over to West Africa, the shores of West Africa, Ghana, cross the Atlantic Ocean as wide as that. Remember, each country differs and we have cultural norms and practices, my dear. So come with an open mind that people are going to see and do things that when we come across to you as a culture shock, but be accepting to know that hey this is not something that you were used to back home but this is their way of doing things so just adjust and just move along so that for me is what will cover open mind and be open-minded to know also that persons are going to speak and say things to you or even you no know, persons when you speak persons will um when you speak persons may not understand you when you speak and you try to reason persons may still not understand you. and it is not a matter of persons not trying it's just their way of life their upbringing so don't be really come across as abrasive or be upset with that try to be accepting of person's culture and to meet them where they are so that for me covers open-minded and you're going to be open-minded in your surroundings open-minded in your workplace in different settings and just learn to be culturally accepting i think we call it cultural assimilation something like that so my next point also will be that of learn the art of emotional intelligence emotional intelligence and if you're working within the public sector meaning that you're dealing with people on a regular basis this is your job every day you have to deal with people you need to learn the art of emotional intelligence and when you come here please learn it even little more emotional intelligence is when you're in tune with your emotions and you know how to control them be in tune with your emotions to know that when people say or do things to you you don't react abruptly you know how to control it for me personally i will say to people that just learn the art to know that when you go to different places workplace different places of a board persons um persons just rise with different demons and don't know how to control them we all have it but we just know how to control them so for me, you will have persons that come to different areas and they have problems or stressors in their um, home, in their family life, and they may come to work and not know how to deal with you. And you just happen to be the one that bears the wrath of it, honey. Learn not to just um to just take it personal and learn to just focus on the work that is at hand. Learn to smile and nod and keep it moving. And that for me is the art of emotional intelligence. And if you want to last long in different professions that deal 
deal with people, you have to learn on a daily basis how to deal with your emotions. Learn that sometimes when people come to the hospital, for me, I say that the family or the patient is not the only one that is sick. Everybody else is sick. It created a disturbance in their family's way of life. And when they come, they want everything just to go as smooth as possible. And sometimes it doesn't. And who is the one that they're going to throw it on when things are not going right? The nurse. So learn the art of emotional intelligence when you get here. Learn the art of controlling your emotions. And learn the art of not allowing people to read you easily. Even if you wake up with a bad day, you go to work. People should not be able to read it that easily. You go to work and give your best and come back home and face whatever you're facing. And that for me can explain the art of emotional intelligence. So we talk about coming with an open mind having emotional intelligence. The next tip I'm going to talk about is organization. And I'm going to focus a bit on organization in terms of your workplace. So when you get here, learn the art of organization. When you come, arrive at least 15 minutes before your work, something I try to do regularly too, but that's a <laughs> 15 or 5 to 10 minutes before your work, see the group load, um, the load of patients that you may have. And this keeps you organized. So when you're ready to take that report, you already have like an overview of the different type of patients that you need to get. If you need to make changes to your assignment, you can do it before. Now, um, another way of being organized is having a report sheet. So I'm going to upload it here. This is a little cheat sheet that I walk around with at work. And this gives an overview of the patients, their personal um date of birth, their name, their diagnosis, if they have IVs, it gives different systems. So you can know if you're looking at a respiratory system, if they have crackles, genital urinary, eyes and nose. It also looks at labs, outstanding labs. And you have a cheat sheet that jots down all of this. And this will be right here. When you take your each patient that you're going to get, you can just drop them down in each section and you can carry this around for all of your patient each day. When different um, labs are outstanding and different things need to be done, you can jot them down on your sheet. And this makes you organized. And I can tell you that when you utilize this sheet, you leave your work early. Because everything has already been documented in your sheet and it's in an organized and a logical setting. Now, when it comes to your end of shift report, now when the nurse is coming to take over from you, everything is already on the sheet and you just go in a step-by-step -step process, my dear, and you cover everything that you need to cover. And I can tell you, I've seen other nurses talk about it and they say that this sheet makes you leave your work on time. So what I normally do is to just print a sheet for each of the patients that I have and I call it a cheat sheet in terms of documentation of the necessary findings. So you guys, this will be available to you down in the comment section below. I'm going to drop it and pin it and it will be free. Free. You can download it free of cost to no charge and you can just keep this downloaded, print it and take it to your workplace and you can share with other persons who may need it. And that's how you can keep yourself organized. Now, organization can and also be in the form of your work area too. When you go to work, you set up your workstation, make sure you have necessary supplies such as your flushes, your caps. If you're going to need um, needles and anything in your little workstation, you have all of those. So you prevent yourself from running back and forth every minute and decreasing the amount of time wasting going back and forth. The next thing I want to talk about in terms of organization, guys, learn the art of clustering your care. Clustering your care um, for me is that when you go to your patients and you introduce yourself and you ask them what they need so that when you step out of the room, you have an understanding, oh, he needs this and I can go and get it in advance. So if you go to another patient, the patient won't be calling you for um, as you step out the room because you already asked them what they need. Now, sometimes it may work or may not work. So you cluster your care in terms of, you know, when it's med time, is go around serving your meds, check on your patients at a certain time interval every hour on the patient, asking them what, what they need and you're anticipating their needs before so that in terms of when they call you know that you'll have already covered certain stuff and you know that they'll still call when you go in the room check your beds look at your bed to see if the bed rails are up make sure that they have their call bell in reach if they need any assistance and that's what you do when you cluster your care and it makes you more organized 
organization outside of the clinical setting i'll just advise you guys to get a daily planner or a book i'm trying to develop something like that so i can um, make available to you guys because the days over here moves very fast very very fast organize a day when you're not at work or even at work you just jot down the necessary things that you need to get done the bills you need to pay and you have a daily planner with that and that's how you can keep yourself organized because it does get overwhelming over here being a new immigrant in a country keeping up with the different bills the deadlines the timelines especially you have children and school and all of that so it's good to keep a little booklet or a little documentation of what you need to do or cover on a daily basis now my third thing is i have to keep my paper because i worry about things my album time management and i think we'd have covered a bit in terms of organization work on time management you know you go even in the clinical circuit setting make sure you have good time management there are certain times when you know when change of shift will start at certain hours depending on the shift that you will work you know your medication time you know your rounding time you know when it's time to wrap up because it's getting closer to that of change of shift so work on your time management and that can be tied in back with clustering your care time management will allow you to have your shift run easily more smoothly and finish in time now i'm not saying because if you have perfect time management every day things can happen yes things will happen but once you have proper time management it can offset some of the delays that you may have at work in dealing with patients especially when you have a critical patient that is like popping down as we would say so make sure you master the art of time management when you go on the unit for as a tip when you go on your units for the first time just watch and see how the other nurses are operating at different times what they are doing and follow suit so my next tip that we're going to focus on is documentation and with documentation i'm going to tie in policy with that cover your something that we call cya in nursing it means cover your ass cover your i's and your t's everything you say or do in terms of interaction make sure you cover yourself in documentation follow suit and keep up to date with the policies of the hospital policies can be found online because most of your charting systems over here are online so keep up to date when you're doing a policy when you're doing a procedure or anything even if you know how to do it just browse over the policy to see what it says your policy covers you and guides your practice so keep up to date with new changes in policies when you see different educators coming around on the unit introducing different devices and items they're not normally call you guys and try to make each and every effort to go and listen to the updates and the changes in medical equipment and devices that they are given as i said before even if you know how to do something already keep up to date with the policy and just browse browse over it always remember to ask for help and if you're unsure ask for help in terms of asking assistance in terms of getting clarity with your charge nurse or anybody else that is in charge of your unit when we mean um we said talk about documentation make sure you cover yourself as much as possible anything that you do you document it it helps to cover you and just remember that documentation helps to guide what you have done to the patient throughout the entire shift so when you have left the unit and um, another nurse takes over they should be able to see certain documentation that they can say oh yes this was done monitor your eyes and o's please continuously monitoring your eyes and always do the necessary checks because i know it does get busy at times and please remember that you work with other healthcare personnel such as your cnas your nurse aides and make sure both of you guys are on the same um, page in terms of care of the patients all right so that will cover documentation and terms of policy the last tip that i'm going to give you guys will be mental health Pay attention to your mental health and give it much priority as much as possible. When we're here, it does get busy. You work three twelves back to back. And even when you're off on your days off, it does get tired. But prioritize your mental health and treat it properly, my dear. Go out, find new places, learn your environment, go to different um 
places or drive with your families and friends and just go out and just give yourself the opportunity to see new places that does help with your mental health take your time off when necessary when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed to prevent you from having burnout it does happen Take that vacation, take that break if you're tired, my dear. And always remember to prioritize your mental health, especially when you come here as an immigrant, working in a different country, learning the system and trying to understand the system. There are many persons who have talked about and have experienced depression, even nurses. And it does depression does not only affect a certain amount of persons, it affects everyone but you have to prioritize your mental health and knows and know what's best for you and how to keep your mental health intact i've spoke about it in other videos such as going to church finding local community groups being a part of whatsapp group taking your family out or even just simply going on the phone and calling somebody who has gone through a similar experience as you and just try to just um, go over the situation to know that other persons have done it before and you can do it too. So these are some of the tips and advices I'll give to fellow international nurses or even professionals that will be migrating to a different country. And as I spoke of speaking to other persons who have done it before, this is why I created a channel like this to help you guys as you go through your process. And now I have I'm also on TikTok, guys, and I've done a live on TikTok, and people spoke about that also, and they requested me to start a little WhatsApp group or a Telegram group. I'm going to work on that so that we can all come together and share as much as and share as much information as possible. So guys, if you like this video and the content that I have produced, give a thumbs up. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and keep following for more as I'll be posting opportunities that I see across the world that you guys can use, whether you're back in the Caribbean, Africa, anywhere, I'll be posting job opportunities to keep you guys up to date and anything to make your lives better. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.